Okay guys, sorry about that. Another thing, sorry about the lighting. Um, I'm under a porch right now. Um, if I was in the yard, I'll be under trees. So we got, the lighting's just all kind of wonky right now. So I'm sorry about that. But I'm trying to make the audio look real, sound real nice. So at least we got that going, so. Had to go inside, get a little drink. We are not sponsored by Arizona tea, even though it's delicious. Okay, so now, about halfway through now. I'm probably going to break this whole thing up into parts, to be honest with you. Because, uh, I don't know, one big long video probably ain't going to work. Open her on up, see what we got in this. Okay, now this, this is another deal. This is another good deal. Dude on Facebook was, uh, this is a prime example of stuff you can find if you look. You're on Facebook, we're selling Victor one and a half with these heavy laminations. Now, I've never owned a Victor uh, anything except for Long Springs. And uh, he had these for sale. And he was selling them for a fine price. I mean, they're, uh, I don't know what malls they are, but he, he was using these for uh, Fox and uh, Mink, I think. And they're heavily laminated. They're even offset a little bit, and he's, I got 18 of them, I think it was, for $125. And, because I think he just had so many of them, he was just trying to get rid of them. So I got them for a steal. I mean, and that's a good heavy lamination. I think these are J.C. Connor laminations. Base plate, and this nice, nice little, um, little, um, Nail swivel. And these are going to be some fine fox traps. These are going to be uh, some fine fox or live market traps. Yeah, I got 18. So that's one, two, three. This is actually a Montgomery step in. Right here, he threw in. And uh, I hear a lot, a lot of um, stuff about these. The main thing is when they first came out, guys were getting them for uh, coons. And they're using them on the wire line due to the rounded jaws. Coon has a very slick foot. And you know, there was a lot of complaints about a uh, WAT. Guys, I'll tell y'all, these are some. I've never held a Victor one and a half. I've just never had them. These are some little, nice little compact traps. I'm, I'm liking them. And, uh, okay, guys, but anyway, look, I want to I just give you a close up of these little Victors. I mean, again, such a, let me show you the lamination job. That's a uh, full jaw lamination. Like, like nothing is uh, nothing is pulling these jaws out with this. These little tips are turned up. The the levers are cut down to sort of come out the ground faster. They have this heavy, heavy, heavy base plate. I think these are JC Con base plates. The only problem I got with this is it's probably gonna be kind of a pain to set these over your knee. Just because the way that is. But then it has to change. I mean, and again, this was, uh, that was like $125 for 18 of these. If I would bought these traps brand new and then had to pay somebody to put all this on, probably been looking at close to 200 bucks. So again, just the, the value of buying these traps. Don't be ashamed to buy these traps, man. Some some guys I've talked to have a stigma. They're like, oh, buying these traps is, you know, like for poor people. No. Especially if you're new starting out, these traps are the way to go. Okay, so, uh, got a steak sticking up out of this one. Uh, this is. Oh. Oh, you guys know what that is. That's a dog knot steak. That's a, uh, this is a. Uh, the steak that old government trappers made famous. This right here was like the thing. So if this is a dog knot steak and we got chain going down through here, I think I know what's at the end of it. Oh yes. So this right here is one of the trap this trap has probably killed more. This 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 variation of trap is this thing's killed some uh, coyotes. This uh, side trap. This is a Victor 
this is a Victor 3N. This this is D3N, like the thing you hear about. This is the MB550's great 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 granddaddy. Um, and this is a this is a property of the United States stamp on. These aren't super rare, but you know they're not super common either. And this is a this is this is just for a wall hanger. I got this for a for a wall hanger. A guy had like 40 of them selling it. I think I got mine for like. I don't know, like 40 bucks or something. If anything, this was more of an impulse buy. Yeah, these have the malleable cast jaws on them. And at the time that these came out, like, there wasn't a more uh, humane trap when these came out. And this was the setup for government trappers. This, this was like... If you didn't use anything else, if you were a coyote, a coyote man, this is what you used. Like it didn't get much better than this unless you start using new houses. This this was this was, and many consider to this day still is the uh, the system. Probably gonna do a separate video all on uh, the three N. I mean, dude, this is crisp. This is this is this is nice. This is going up on the wall. Probably gonna make a little plaque for it and everything. That's sexy. Look at this. Well, y'all just see it. All this glory. Like, this thing is like new old stock. A dog knot steak. And, from my understanding, these dog knot steaks are made of a, uh, I forgot what it's called, but like, this metal does not want to bend at all. Like, it's a, uh, I think like beater root something like that like these are apparently some really really tough steaks like guys still use these happily and these were used with this length of chain this is uh i think these can't stand this is like three or four foot chain these were used as a single steak and just the way they're engineered it's extremely hard for a uh coyote to jack these up just due to the length of chain and how it's made so that's cool we don't have a separate video just on the uh, just on the three that's that's great. That's a piece. Of, that's a piece of American history right there. Uh, so I see some ton of bears here. Yeah, we have more. These are like one sixty. Juno, Alaska. Old boy actually emailed me. Uh, I mean, uh, got me on Messenger. This is uh, this is old Jesse Ross, bro. You uh, he asked me about it. This, if I remember right, this is a package of one sixteenth cable. And you know he had it. Should be a bunch of locks and stuff in here too. Yeah, this is a uh, nice little cable. Should we try snaring some gray fox or doing a quote unquote ultimate small game snare? That'd be cool. I forgot how much is supposed to be in here. And, uh, yeah, this is pre cut to length. It's like 500 feet. Also, a bunch of uh, cleated cam locks for that size. It's uh, 116th. We got 83 S L C A M T. I guess that's the uh, cleated cam locks. 74 uh, double ferrules, 67 stops, and 187 small washers. That's all that is right there. So that's gonna, it's gonna make some cool stuff, guys. And if you guys are wondering what the noise is in the background, um, I have a special needs family member, and that's that's him. He's uh he's not freaking out or anything. He's just He's having a good time right now. He, that's 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 what he does when he's really um he's uh, really happy, excited. Ha when he's having a good day, that's what he does. So I apologize for that in the background. I'll see if I can denoise it. I'll probably try to tell him to 
calm down a little bit, but that's what he's doing. And he comes out every now and then because he wants to know what's going on. But yeah, that's that's what that is. So um, yeah. And I mean, he goes out fishing and stuff with me. He's a, he's a good guy. He's just he's uh I think he's autistic. Autistic. I don't know what level he is, but yeah, that's what it is. So uh, speaking of, let me go tell him to calm down. Alrighty, what we got next? Um, look at this big box. Let's open her up. Somebody already opened her up, but we're gonna reopen her up. Okay, so one and a half. Uh, this is the main Cree on the bomb, so these are dukes, yeah. Do one and a half. You can never have too many of them. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. Twenty-two Duke one and a halfs. I mean, Duke one and a half is a good little trap. Some of these got upgraded chain on it. Some of them don't. I mean, we just never have enough of these. They're fun to modify. Slap some lambs on them. Slap nail base plate on them. You got yourself a box trap. Put some double jaws in them. You got yourself one health coon trap. Uh, you can do a web jaw mod on them. Make them. I mean, just use them base like this for a muskrat trap. Uh, this is a bridger. That's a nice little trap. A bridger one. Yeah, guys, y'all, if y'all want to see something, like, when I'm, like, whip these traps with certain traps. Oh, that's nice. I get a, uh, I got to put, like, little thank you notes in here. It says, uh, thanks, Donovan, for doing business. Appreciate doing business with you. Uh, Reese. I'll appreciate Mr. Reese. You're, uh, you're a fine fella. Well, I felt like that. That's really nice to get stuff like that in the mail. Trappers do that all the time. Yeah. It's little things, man. Right? Little, little bitty things. Okay. Got one of these from Georgia. Now. If it's what I think it is, I'm about to hear a lot of crap talking from y'all. Because, uh, because of me and my modifications. But, okay, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna give me that easy. Okay, so we got more steak rings. A lot more steak rings. Steak rings with swivels, and we got some, uh, what is this? Got some 7x7. 7x7, 360, 3, uh, 30 second cable. Got a bunch of J-hooks, got some swivels. Okay. I'm running out of room here of everything, so I'm just kind of going to swoop all out over here to the side. Yeah, there's a bunch of... Uh, Lap links and stuff in here. Okay, what else you got? I'm sorry from sound sort of on air job, guys. This is getting kind of. This is getting kind of uh, repetitive. Well, we're almost done. We're almost done. Okay. I'm surprised I didn't get any Duke Fours or Bridger Threes. I'm highly, highly surprised at myself. Okay, so we got more Duke Three, one and three quarters. And these may have went with that other set because these are all, these are all rigged up the same. These are all uh, laminated, base plated. Got the wolf fangs, two swivels. I mean, this is this will be a nice beginner setup. Especially for people in a harder soil. 
be a fine beginner setup for coyotes. You will need a pulley though, because uh, the wolf fangs don't like coming out. You put them on chain, you just ain't gonna take chain. That's, just, that's a good beginner rig right there. Check time real quick. 1707. Okay. Oh my god, more than three quarters. Damn, I've I've talked so much crap about this trap, but I saw them. I saw them for sale, and I was like, you know what? These are these for a good price. Now these are set up. Oh, these are set up like old school Victor number two Fox Trapper style. These have got a um, a hole drill through the bottom of them, right? Get center swiveling, crunch proof swivel. You got the old style stop shock. See, this isn't an inline. This is a, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's not an inline. This is a, this, this type of setup is strictly for Fox. And then you have a single, single stake swivel. That's nice. I'll probably add more chain to it because I don't like running one stake on that short of a chain. I just, I just don't like that idea whatsoever. Because they can get on top of it. Like, if you get a coyote, you can get on top of it. You can do that. Pull a, pull a bone. So, those are dyed in wax. Never quite got the old dyed in wax in it. It feels so greasy. Whew! Alright, so I'll see you in my favorite little bitty traps in here. And these are painted. Um, because the box is tore up, I can see them. These are. Bridger one and three quarters. This is by far one of the like heaviest Dewey. Are these three quarters? No, these are Duke twos. These are Duke number twos. These are Duke number twos, and the guy has them set up heavy as hell. Step down pit pans on. They're all set, and these still have the old. Yeah. Now, when Duke came out with this. There was a lot of a lot of people loved it, but. One of the main problems with it was uh, the main downfall of it was the bottom, the D ring. A lot of people were like, "Oh, I've never had a problem with a D ring," but then you got just means people having D ring pop out. And the reason is because the D ring isn't welded; it's just it comes down and it clamps on. But the problem was voiced multiple times, and uh, Mr. Duke. They got a, a program now, you call them up and you're like, yeah, I got some old Dukes and they'll send you a new little thing. That's what you do, you bolt cut this off of it, you slide a new one on and it bolts on. There's no way it can pop out, but. I laminate these, I mean, it comes with a nice little bit of chain. Heavy, heavy, heavy uh, lap link here, you get double stake with that. And uh, yeah, that's about the only thing I think I'll do is these, just laminate them. That's for as much of them I got. I shouldn't have to buy a trap in about five years. Alright, see what this is. Okay, so these are Duke 3's. Standard draw Duke 3's, and I'm going to turn probably all these into mini monsters. And the guy took the uh, springs off and everything. Yeah, get them in the box. I don't know how many he is, but yeah, um, we're gonna do some cool stuff with these. I actually want to try and uh, turn them into long springs, but I got so many long springs now. I don't think I want to do any of that crap. But yeah, so I got a bunch of these now. And I'm actually gonna leave them in the box because yeah, all the springs and stuff are in the box. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna toss these. Anymore. 
Uh, we got one from Christopher Scotty Young. Let's see what this is. Oh God. Okay, so um, some of you guys are really gonna get on my head about this. Excuse me. Some of y'all are really gonna get on my head about this because I've talked some mess about MB, but um, I got about eight MB 550s in here. I know what y'all gonna say, Wolfie. I thought you were never gonna buy MB 550s. Well. You gotta have them for a fine price. And one thing is, I really want to see if I can make long springs out of these because I thought that would be cool as hell. I have little number 11 size long spring, like little cast off long spring traps. But um, the other thing is, I'm like, you know, I talk a lot of mess about it, but that's usually just for fun. So, the guy had them for sale. He had eight of them for uh, like 70 bucks. I mean, I mean, it doesn't. It definitely don't look like a bad trap at all. You know, I guess more partial to the one and a half size. Uh, fine little trap. I, I mean, I like it. I definitely like it. I just, uh, I don't know, man. There's just so much hype. Yeah. About the 550, 550 is the only trap you ever need. Blah 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 blah. You know, just. It's kind of turned me off, I guess. But, I mean, these are fine little traps. I like the way they look. So, there's that. There goes my pride. Okay. So, let's look at more uh, wolf fangs and uh, saber tubes here. Yep, that's the other uh, dozen. I don't think anything's taking these anywhere. Compared to mine, they're twice the same build. So. Y'all seen the videos online, so these are it. These are nice. of it that's my little bro when air was playing around got a bridger number uh two dogless i remember he was selling two traps it was a number two dogless and something else can't quite remember but i got them because uh i really want to see how the dogless work because i was uh really thinking because i've seen pictures of people did it before I'm taking a, a dogless pan and putting it on a long spring making a you know a dogless long spring i thought that'd be Pretty cool to do some videos on. So, uh, see how it works now. We can definitely do this on some of them old uh, long springs. Let's see what the other thing is. And oh my god, guys, this is one of my dream traps right here. This right here is a coyote cuff 33. This isn't 22, this is 33. Coyote cuff is like a uh, goddamn MB550 on steroids. This is, um, this is, or this is. MB or is this the two? This might be the two. This is the two. Uh, it might be, I don't know. But this trap was uh, designed. I'm trying to get a good close up of this. This trap was made and designed from, uh, I think his name is Mr. Tom Bodet out of Montana, I think he is. And I've had I've heard nothing good stuff about this trap. This trap is made for uh, 
like those uh, serious, serious coyote guys who are doing like uh, a three-day check. And they have to have that coyote in that trap, but they need to keep him, um, keep his foot as well as possible so he don't get out. And I think they're currently right now making a loud market trap with um, old Chip Davis from Expanded Pan. By the way, he's the uh, president from my state's trap association. Great guy. Great guy. Um, yeah, uh, that has one hell of an offset. It smells like coyote. I just want to show you the offset on this one compared to this one. A lot of people say you can't hold none of that offset. People do it all the time in this thing. And I remember Casey Payne did a, uh, Casey Payne, uh, he takes the jaws. He orders the jaws custom. He puts the jaws of the 33s inside of uh, Duke 4s, and that's what he uses. And he's, uh, he was talking about how the, the trap was designed to actually uh, cut the foot just so much, just a little bit, uh, to allow for, uh, to drain fluids. That, uh, that helps keep the foot alive, and that's actually better for the animal. A, a really small cut, just to help drain the fluid out. But that's really cool. This is going to be in our wall hanger. That's going to be in our wall hanger. So going out with the rest of the workhorses. Throw that in there with the new twos, and, uh, Let's see what we got here. Got one from uh, Mr. Randy. Yeah, these are more Victor, Victor twos, laminated. Got that center swivel deal going on. Nothing really to go over that we haven't already done. So apparently got uh, another dozen saber tooths. So only got two dozen. Yeah. Let's we'll buy more chain, guys. Put all these up over here. I need it. This is something I really need. These look like brand new 330s. And these are Bridger. Bridger 330s. Cool. Made in Taiwan. Because one of the main things I'm probably going to end up doing to get permission is trap fever. So I really need 330s, and these are like the only ones that somebody had on uh, had for sale for something like half price. So. I got six of these. Two. Final pack. 
Oh, Amazon. Where I'm looking like already, I see, uh, it's like we got another gill net here. Now, I remember I ordered one of these as a, that was a trammel net. Trammel net mean, meaning it's a, uh, a small mesh net, and it has two large mesh nets on the sandwich it, so it catches the fish better. And this looks like a really nice one. Got little floats and little lead on it. Put that over there with the other nets. Got some net needles. These are actually really small for what I use. Amazon had them for sale. I was like, oh yeah, we can use them. Uh, I, I might be able to. We got a, we got a set of dies, 7.62 by 54 Russian. And a lot of people don't know I reload, but I, I do reload. And I do have a Mosin that's got some work done to it, so I'm gonna need them for that. Uh, I guess my, somebody went through here, but we also have some of these trot line clips. Now this is the, uh, these are actually trot line clips I was talking about. And uh, how it works is you get your main line and you do it like that and it clips onto the main line. And uh, your drop hangs down from here. That's how you take the fish off. But I saw a really, really cool video of a guy. He actually uses these on his, on his uh, limb lines. And he does commercial. And he'll have his main line hooked to the tree. And it's just. And uh, he'll come out on the book, boat, grab the line, unsnap it, throw the fish in, the line in. And he'll just put another, uh, another baited uh, hook on there. One of these. So uh, we're going to do some videos on that. I think that's really cool. We also have. Uh, these are the these are the actual trot line hooks that Matt Jones recommends. These are the uh, Mustad 34 34009SS size one. That's what he recommends for trot line fishing. I'm not saying he's wrong whatsoever, but that's a small hook. And it's uh, gonna compare this to a four rot. That's four rot hook. That's a size one. Now, his whole thing behind it, he's saying you can uh, catch a little fish and a big fish on this. And apparently, these, these little hooks get such a bite, such a bite into a uh, the side of a big fish's mouth that uh, you catch big fish on them all the time. It takes a really big fish to strain that hook out. So uh, again, Matt Matt is a beast when it comes to commercial fishing. So. He knows what he's talking about. I also have a book, Trot Lines, Artisanal Long Lining for Food and Profit. Now, when I uh, ordered this book, I thought it was on freshwater trot line because there's like no books on trot line whatsoever. So uh, I got it. But now looking through it, it's strictly on, it's on salt water. But well, I mean, I guess uh, I'm gonna go through it. I, I reckon there's gonna be some stuff we can use in here. But I figured it'll be good for the library. Yeah, there's that. And there's a few net gauges in here. And these are uh, my Amazon saying these are still on their way here, but these are Chinese and they're still again they're kind of small for what I do, but we can use them. Okay, but yeah guys, that is, that is what a year worth of buying used trapping gear, that's what the unboxing looks like. So, uh, yeah, really hope you guys enjoy this, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a pain to edit all this, but, uh, it might have been in multiple parts and everything, but you guys you guys see something in here you want a specific video done about or you have ideas please put it in the comments y'all um and again I, i'm not doing this video to like you know show i'm the top dog or i'm the big, biggest and the baddest look at all the money i have blah 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 um i'm doing this to show the kind of stuff you can get used and that like buying used is not you're not just gonna get crap you know if you're going to deploy like i did Make sure you get a PayPal account because you can you can rack up. You can just rack up. You know, you keep looking at like the uh, Trapper Trader, uh, Trap Shed. You can get some good crap, y'all. 
Here's a prime example. This is what a year of budgeting less than $200 uh, a pay period. You know, get paid twice a month, this is 200 bucks. If I was getting paid 200 bucks, it wasn't that bad. I mean, if you're flipping burgers, then maybe 50 bucks. And yeah, a lot of it is, I got a dozen fully modified uh, one and a half chain and everything. Everything hooked up on it. 50 bucks, you budget like 60 bucks out just for your trapping gear. When trapping season comes, you're not scrambling around. Heck, some of this stuff is already dipped and dyed. Just pull it out and use it, man. Um, I got basically everything I need here. So, um, yeah. So, a few more things. Um, where the channel is going to go, what we're going to be doing. I'm probably going to make a separate video on this, reiterating everything, but um the channel is going to get a little more uh i don't want to say hardcore but we're going to get a little more we're going to be doing a little more stuff and i'm going to make a patreon and i'm probably going to put it in the description of this video and i know there's a lot of uh a lot of stuff i know coon creek outdoors he has a patreon and a lot of trappers are like yeah he you know he probably gets food stamps and he's asking for handouts but the fact of the matter is, is that this is kind of expensive. As much as I like doing it, this does take a lot of time out of my day. Okay, so if you want to help support the channel, help it, you know, help me get more stuff to modify, get more. If you want something done, like if you really want something done and you want to help contribute, you want to go drop me a dollar or two every month. I, you know, you don't have to drop $100. If you don't want to drop any money, that's perfectly fine perfectly fine i don't you know I perfectly understand but if you want to drop some money because i know a lot of guys want to support youtubers i want to make this your patreon you can go drop me some money now you're probably saying oh well you can just monetize your channel well i was going to monetize it but there's a lot of uh there's a lot of uh politics and left leaning uh i try to say neutral try not to be too far left try not to be too far right but when it comes to outdoor channels like mine Coon Creek, uh, Hooser Outdoors, uh, Chris Chris Gillum Man stuff over on his channel. We get we get we get a lot of crap from YouTube, man, because some anti can get their uh, hammies in a bunch and report us, and they'll take our monetization. Uh, YouTube has to review our videos, so they might not like seeing something, and we might not get monetized at all. So, you know, it's not just as simple as what most people think it is. And I'm not trying to get rich off of this. You're not going to get rich. An outdoor channel is not going to get rich off of YouTube. Uh, the people who get rich off of YouTube are like gamers. PewDiePie, Markiplier. Them are the guys who are making, you know, $1,500 a week off of YouTube. But that's because they have 6.5 billion subscribers or some stuff like that. That's why they're able to do that. I'm not. My channel isn't here to really make money. I, would, I wouldn't mind. But mainly what I'm asking for is a little bit of help here and there. To help buy supplies. Possibly if my camera breaks down, help me. Uh, everything is going to be going to the channel. That's most of that money is going to be going toward the channel. So, so got guys wanting me to do more cage making videos. Look, cattle panel is expensive. Springs are expensive. Um, welding wire, all that stuff is all expensive. So, you want to help the channel? You want to start Patreon? Probably going to probably have a link in the description. Go over here and donate some money. Don't matter how much. I might do. Uh, I might end up doing some stuff just for the patrons just for the people who send me some stuff i'm gonna have specialized uh more detailed stuff i'm not going to try and hold your arm to it but yeah uh that's how it's going to be again um i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you guys don't just think i was over here trying to gloat um if you want a video on anything specific or you got ideas or you got a suggestion just in the comments let me know um if you're that one guy who likes to come on my channel, I know who you are, and you just, you got like three or four different profiles that you argue with, like, it's you, I know who you are, yeah, like, like just, you can do that in the comments too, I find it hilarious, but, yeah, guys, so, I'm back, we're about to, we're about to hit it off, we're gonna be doing some stuff, so, yeah, with that, ladies and gentlemen, my final swig of tea, I'll catch you later. Thank you.